I'm here to say it, my friends. The future will be super. <laughs> Is this some vague reference to superheroes? Well, not really. Unless we're talking about the superhero of electrochemical energy storage devices. <laughs> okay, yes. We're talking about supercapacitors today. And specifically... How do we utilize supercapacitors to the best of their super abilities? With the use of protection and power management ICs. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Many supercapacitor applications require protection and power backup. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Pete Pietlick from Little Fuse and I explore the benefits of protection and power management ICs for supercapacitor applications. We also investigate how these IC solutions compare with discrete solutions and the advantages that Little Fuse protection and power management ICs bring to supercapacitor applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Fuse. Hi, Pete. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. It's good to be back with you again. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about how to implement protection and power management ICs for supercapacitors today. But Pete, before we dig into the details, what all will we be covering today? Sure. So we'll do a quick overview about the supercapacitor, what it is, how it operates, applications that require protection and power backup. We'll also introduce our latest power management and protection IC, the LS0502 series. We'll compare the IC solutions with discrete solutions, IC solutions, features, and benefits. We'll also go over a few application examples, a summary of the features of the LS0502 chip, and also additional resources and contact information. Fantastic. All right. So, Pete. Set the stage for us. Give us a brief rundown on supercapacitors. So a supercapacitor falls in between a regular capacitor and a battery. So a capacitor basically functions on a physical process. A battery is more of an electrochemical process, sometimes otherwise known as EDLCs or ultracapacitors or electric double layer capacitors. So there's a lot of key features and benefits of supercapacitors. They have very wide operating temperatures, high discharge power densities. From a safety perspective, no chemical reactions, very long lifetime, almost unlimited charge and discharge cycles, and also no shipping restrictions. And it goes back to safety. No chemical reaction is really the key feature there, and also very high discharge rates in the end application. There's also a recent advancement in supercapacitors, otherwise known as the hybrid supercapacitor. So this is now a cross between a supercap and we can say a lithium ion battery. So there are some changes. Basically what the hybrid supercapacitor is, it's a combination of the underlying features of both the capacitor and a lithium ion battery. So you have, in most cases, lithium ion doped graphite anodes and activated carbon cathodes. The capacity or energy density is significantly increased. It can be two to four times that of a standard supercapacitor. And also very low resistance, small size, up to several hundred farads. Typically you'll see a regular supercapacitor in the tens of farads. With the hybrid supercapacitor, it can be in the hundreds of farads. A higher operating voltage, 3.8, versus roughly about 2.7 for a standard supercapacitor. Low leakage, same operating temperatures, and you also have the same life cycle benefits as a standard supercapacitor with two to four times the energy density. So, Pete, what kind of applications are a good use for supercapacitors? Mainly three different types of applications. Uh, where you'll find supercapacitors used. Generally, you'll see them used for main power applications. These can be thermometers, headphones, keyboards, computer mouse, it may be a POS terminal. 
So before these devices were powered either from battery or cord connected, you can now use a super cap to power these types of devices. Again, this is providing main power and you're gonna get that very long lifetime. And depending on usage of these types of devices, it may be from days to even weeks in some cases, again, depending on the usage of these types of devices. The second is to provide backup power. And this may be a dash cam application, maybe some type of storage application, even smart power grids. So if you do lose that main incoming power, the SuperCap is now going to provide that backup power to the end application. And the third is pulsed power. This is where you need a little bit of extra power. It may be when an application is cycling between different features where it does require that extra voltage and current draw. That's where that supercapacitor will provide that energy. So let's talk about protection power management ICs. How do these solutions compare with discrete solutions? If we were to implement all the functionality of a charge controller and protection circuits discreetly, generally you're gonna have a lot of discrete components. You're gonna have your power switches, you're gonna have logic, and this may be 10 to 15 discrete components. So this is generally gonna result in a larger PCB size. You may have more leakage, power loss from the passive components. You may need the MCU in some cases uh, to intervene. And generally, overall, it's going to be a higher cost solution. So ideally, having a single chip, which incorporates the power management and charging function in one IC, is really ideal. So, Pete, what does LittleFuse offer in this realm? So we recently introduced the LS0502 series. And the LS0502 offers a fully integrated, all-in-one single chip power management and protection solution. And it's mainly tailored for systems with two cell supercapacitor backup power applications. We also have the S version, which is for a single super cap. So both of these include various features such as input over voltage and over current protection, a reverse blocking switch, and a supercapacitor charging control circuit with active balancing. So this integrated solution ensures a safe, efficient, and cost-effective solution for supercap applications, all packaged into a very compact single-chip design. So, Pete, can you explain the functionality of these chips? Sure. Basically, the chip will operate in one of four modes. And depending on what is happening in the system, it may be in two modes, it may be in more, or may switch in between modes. So the orange arrow illustrates the power flow path during normal and backup operation modes. So during normal operation, the system load receives power from the input source while the supercapacitor is automatically charged with a controlled current and voltage level from the input power. And that is depicted by the purple arrow. Now in an event of an input power loss, the LS052 will automatically transition into backup operation mode and generate a false signal. And that's depicted by the PFLTB pin. And that's basically to inform the system of the input power failure. So in the backup power mode, which is depicted by the blue arrow, the power supply is automatically switched to the supercapacitor. And what that does is now it ensures a reliable backup power source to the load. Okay, so input protection is also an important aspect to consider here as well, right? So the chip also features input protection with over voltage, over current, and also as a subset of over current, a hard short circuit protection feature. So basically we're protecting the system and the supercapacitor from an inrush current and voltage spike. And generally this is caused when you first charge that capacitor. Generally it's going to be in an uncharged state. So when it is first charging, you will get that spike. So the chip will protect against that. So it does have certain features, pinouts, where you can set it with a resistor to set those features over voltage and over current. It also supports a very fast trip comparator for short circuit events I previously mentioned. 
So if there is a hard short, the chip will automatically disconnect and it'll remain in a hiccup mode. And once that fault clears, it will go ahead and it will provide power again. So a very nice feature in addition to, we can say a low overload, overcurrent event, also supports short circuit events, very fast reaction time of the chip. Another feature is the input power fault monitor and reverse current blocking. So the power fault bar PFB is an integrated programmable input voltage monitor. Basically, it is a pin which connects to the main power rail and it basically operates with an external resistance divider. And that's how you set exactly what that voltage threshold is going to be. So if there is a fault, if you do go above the predetermined set level, it will actually flag on that pin to inform the system that there is some type of fault. The next is reverse current blocking. The chip includes an ideal diode circuit for reverse current blocking and protection. So when the input voltage is lost, and the way that is determined it is basically the input voltage minus the output voltage, and if it's less than 25 milliamps, the device immediately turns off the power switch. And the power switch is the series FETs. So that ensures that power does not flow from the system back into the power source. In many applications, we don't want to drain off maybe capacitors or memory units. So we want that reverse current blocking function and we want it to operate as fast as possible. So you also mentioned linear charge management earlier. Can we talk about that as well? Sure. The LS0502 series chip works as a powerful linear charge capable of charging supercapacitor at very fast speeds, up to 350 milliamps safely. So the functionality includes trickle charge, constant current, constant voltage charge. So three different modes of charging. And what is the reason for that? So when we're dealing with a deeply discharged capacitor, you will want the chip to charge in a trickle charge mode, really to precondition that capacitor. So this is using a very low current level. Typically, it's going to be about half of the constant current value. So once the capacitor's voltage rises above roughly 1.1 volts, the chip will initiate the constant current charge mode. So setting the charging current through an external resistor on one of the package pins. So this is going to result in a linear increase in voltage during the charging cycle. So the charging cycle progresses until the supercapacitor will reach a target voltage. And again, this can also be programmed using a pin on the chip. So the constant voltage loop comes into action at this point, accurately controlling the supercapacitor's charge level, really to prevent overcharging. Charging is then terminated and changed to end of charge state once the CFB voltage is above that 1.1 voltage threshold. Okay, so what about backup operation? Can we take a closer look at this feature too? Sure. So one of the key features of the LS0502 is the backup operation feature, but it also provides an under voltage lockout. So when the power fault is below a certain threshold, consider the input power source is lost, okay? The chip will switch to providing power through a parallel FET to the external load. Okay, so now we have the supercapacitor powering the load. So in this backup mode, the quiescent current draw from the supercapacitor is very low. So it's only then when the incoming power is lost is when the supercapacitors will be brought into the circuit and power that load. Also for under voltage lockout, if the input voltage or could be supercapacitor voltage were to fall below a certain threshold, the chip will disconnect the load. In many cases, we want to keep a certain voltage level. It may be for certain backup operations, memory, and so on. So the chip also does provide that feature. Okay, so what about active voltage balance? We need to consider this aspect as well, right? So active voltage balancing circuits actively control the voltages at the nodes of the series connected devices, really to ensure that they're equal to a fixed reference voltage. So the LS0502 integrates an active voltage balancing circuit. So with the VMID pin connected to the center point of the two capacitors and a protection circuit. So that's really where we're sensing for the active voltage balance. 
So during charging mode, the voltage between the two stacked capacitors, so remember we have two capacitors now in series, is compared to what half of the total capacitor voltage. So current is divided to maintain these two voltages close to each other, and the circuit continuously monitors their voltage for each capacitor. If any of the capacitor voltages reach roughly around 2.6 volts during charging, the charging process is halted and the recovery charging is enabled for the capacitor under 2.6 volts with cell balancing. So this is achieved by reducing the charge currents by about 3 milliamps maximum to balance the two connected supercapacitors. So similarly, during discharge mode, discharging is stopped to protect the supercapacitors if any capacitor voltage drops below ground. All right. So, Pete, do you have any sample applications you can share with us? Sure. Let's take a look at a few application examples. The first being a POS scanner, so point of sale scanner. I think everyone is really familiar with these. So they can be charged up. They can be connected. They may be battery powered, but they could also use a supercapacitor as its main power. So in this example, we're showing the charge through a USB cable. So the chip is providing that charge management for the capacitors. So it's basically charging them up, okay? Then you can disconnect that main incoming power and the POE scanner will be powered solely off of the supercapacitors. So providing that power, depending if this is using a regular supercapacitor or a hybrid supercapacitor, we may also include a load switch in that path, especially if you need a little bit extra power so all the functions of charging, initially charging the super caps, and then providing the power and also protection is provided all in one package. Another example, and this is a backup system example, is of a dash cam. So generally they will be powered by the incoming power feed. It may be USB, it may be just straight DC. If that power was lost for whatever reason, this may be an in-vehicle application. We lost the main power for various reasons. The chip will automatically switch to providing the backup power via the capacitors. As we can see in the schematic, it is the blue arrow. So now through that parallel FET, we are ensuring continuity of power to the end application, in this case being the dash cam. Another example is a pulse power example, ebook. Generally, it's gonna be powered, this application, off of the battery itself. In some cases, it may also be off the five volt USB, but that's generally for charging lithium ion battery. So what will happen is if there is an extra need of current, and maybe certain features turning on and off, the supercapacitor will provide that instantaneous energy. So that current draw, which may not be available at a very fast rate to the system. So it is for pulse power uh, type applications, you're needing that extra energy, extra current, and that will be provided by the supercapacitors. All right, so Pete, can you recap the benefits that these solutions bring to the table? Sure, so the LS052 chip combines both charging control and protection in a very small IC package. We protect against the input supply over voltage to protect the supercapacitors and the downstream load application. Accurate charging control of the supercapacitors. We're also providing active balancing. Again, that is very important uh, when you're using two supercapacitors in series. Very low power consumption. So the quiescent current is very low. Also, we're providing an ideal diode, which also helps with power consumption. And again, seamless charging control. So you're automatically switching between the different charging modes. You don't need any external control, no microprocessor features. It's all done within the chip itself. And you also get the full signal and indication to the system with input is lost. So again, a fully integrated charge controller and protection IC all in one. Excellent. So what kind of additional information does LittleFuse offer for these solutions? So we do provide several application notes and technology briefs and also evaluation boards. These are very comprehensive application notes. So very helpful for the designer, either they're familiar with SuperCab, so they're not, or how this chip works. Just by reading through those application notes makes it much easier for the designer to design in this chip.
So Pete, if my audience would like to connect with Little Fuse, how would you suggest they go about contacting you guys? So we do provide global application support. So depending on the region that the end user is located, we can be contacted directly via our phone support line, or you can go directly to littlefuse.com under contact us. Also, if our customers are already engaged with us, working with us on solutions applications, they can locally contact our regional sales manager and or FAE. Fantastic. Well, Pete, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Views. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash 